John, Paul, George, and Ben by Lane Smith. Once there were four lads, John, Paul, George, and Ben. Take that five lads. There was also independent Tom, always off doing his own thing. John was a bold lad. At the start of every school year, the students were asked to write their names on the chalkboard, and every year it was the same story. John, the would say, you have lovely penmanship, John. Your confidence is refreshing, but John, come on! We don't need to read it from space. Paul was a noisy lad. Before fun was invented, people joined bell ringing clubs. As a member at Boston's Old North Church, Paul spent hours practicing in the Belfry Tower. Over time, that bell ringing took a toll on young Paul. All day, his head was filled with loud bings and bongs. He had to practically scream just to hear himself talk. Now that's fine around the belfry, but not work. Extra large underwear? Sure we have some. Let's see, large, large, extra large. Here they are, great big extra large underwear. Paul was like a bullhorn in a china shop. Your wig? Yes, it's coming. And your polka dot shirts are coming! And the big bridges are coming! It took many years and a midnight ride for people to finally appreciate his special talent. The red coats are coming! Everyone except that big underwear lady, she was still mad. George, George was an honest lad. One day, he took his shiny new hatchet and chopped down his family's cherry tree. When his father discovered the tree, he asked, Son, do you know who kills this beautiful little cherry tree? I cannot tell a lie, answered George. Twas I who chopped down this cherry tree. Then run to my arms, dearest boy, cried his father. For you have paid me for it a thousandfold with your honesty. Really? said George. In that case, when I tell you I've taken out the apple orchard, leveled the barn, and made kindling with your carriage, you'll be a wealthy, wealthy man. Ben was a clever lad. Not only did he have a saying for every situation, he generously shared them with anyone, anywhere, any time. Fish and visitors stink after three days. He considered it his duty to provide frequent free advice. The sleeping fox catches no poultry. Those who in quarrels interpose must often wipe a bloody nose. If your head is waxed, don't walk in the sun. Three can keep a secret. The townsfolk were so taken by his generosity, they came up with a saying, especially for Ben. Please shut your big yap! I like it, said Ben. Short and to the point. Work a fox or turkey in there and I think you've got something. Tom was an independent lad. One day, his teacher, Mr. Douglas, asked the class to make birdhouses by gluing macaroni to ye old balsa wood. Tom happily ignored him and used traditional building materials in a neoclassical design. When the class made a palm tree, Tom took one look and said, Not on your life! and quickly left to sketch his own tree. Young Thomas, fumed Teacher Douglas, would you mind explaining to the class why you insist on working so independently? Certainly, said Tom. In fact, I've taken the liberty to list the very reasons. Fear not, sir. I've used small words for the benefit of the colors. Tom learned the power of his words that day. 
Mr. Douglas told him to pursue all the life, liberty, and happiness he wanted. Independently in the corner, the other students pursued lunch. The rest is history. Say, you want a revolution? Well, John, Paul, George, Ben, and Tom sure did. In April of 1775, they got one. The Redcoats were coming. In fact, King George III's army was marching to Lexington and Concord to arrest John and other sons of liberty. Fortunately, Paul Revere was a noisy man. After his midnight ride, every minute man, woman, and child knew who was coming and what they'd be wearing. It was the start of the Revolutionary War. The Americans needed to formally state their separation from the king. Who better than Thomas Jefferson, an independent man, to write the Declaration of Independence? Simply signing such a document was treasonous and dangerous. Ben Franklin, a clever man, said it best. We must all hang together, he quipped, or assuredly, we shall all hang separately. One might think twice about signing his name, not John Hancock. A bold man, he was the first to scribble his autograph. And man, just look at the size of that John Hancock. The war was won thanks to General Washington. Everyone thought he would make a great king for the new United States of America. But George Washington was an honest man. The last thing we need is another King George, he said. President George, however, has a nice ring to it. Ye old epilogue. George didn't live in the White House like all the other presidents. He was asked to live in New York City, where there aren't so many trees.